Hello and welcome to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, the Flash Forge Inventor 2. So this is an entry level uh, education and potentially professional level um, printer. It's only designed for PLA, um, so let's go through a few of the stats to begin with. So it's a direct drive setup on the hot end, so it will print things like flexibles. However, the build plate is not heated. So as it's a non-heated build plate, you are somewhat limited with what you're going to be able to get to adhere to the build plate to begin with. So ABS is going to be a no-go. PET G would be tricky and I would challenge probably wouldn't work um, but if you're putting this into a maker space or something like that PLA is perfectly fine because it's all enclosed it means that children can't put their tiny little spindly fingers in all the different places to get those stuck the filament goes in the back this has the same <coughs> issue as the other file uh, the other flash forge machines that, um, that also use enclosed spool holders, which is that not all spool holders, not all spools will fit in this. You can print externally with the machine, but it's worth noting that the filament sensor is integral to this. So if you were to print externally with the machine, um, you would lose the filament, you would lose the filament sensor. It has some good features for a skull, things like an intelligent door, so it can tell when the door is open and when it isn't, and when it's open, it can stop the print. Um, again, just stops kids from being able to open it and immediately stick their hand straight in and touch something very hot or whatever. Um, it's got a nice small footprint. The build volume is equally small, 150 by 140 by 140. Um, if you again if you're doing smaller models in schools you're using this for some rapid prototyping pieces this machine is is perfectly adequate for that um it's it's got some nice features as well it's got a uh, wi-fi built in and it's got a built-in webcam so you can remotely monitor whatever it is you're doing um and uh, and it's not a it's not a cost prohibitive machine to own so, um, so Filoprint are currently selling this for 476 without VAT or 571 with. Um, it's not the world's most versatile machine, but every machine should have its application. So every machine has a point to it being there, and this one's point is that it's there to teach you through flash print software um, that 3D printing can be easy. It doesn't have to be hard it doesn't have to be you know it doesn't have to be this really technical exercise where you've got to spend days months weeks whatever um trying to trying to calibrate your machine it's uh, get it out of the box and within a relatively short space of time you'll be up and you'll be up and running so let's take a look at some of the models we've printed with this so because of the smaller build volume, um, we were a little bit limited with some of the things we can do. We started off by doing the obligatory um, vase there, or vase, depending on how you want to talk about it. Um, in vase mode, that came out really nice, super clean, nice consistent extrusion, really, really good. We used the M600 command to do a pause in the middle of the print so that we could print this in two colours. Um, and it came out really, really nicely. It all printed flat, um, but it came out really, really clean. Um, we've got a obelisk here, which again came out really nice. A little bit of an issue around the bottom there, where you, I don't know if you can see that, where there's some holes in the surface of the print. That was down to us. Um, that was down to us not tuning the um, extrusion properly the, the flow rate properly but we fixed that in our next prints this is a cube pretty much took up the entire build volume when we printed it um, and uh, it does light up although the battery has fallen out and i don't know where it went so uh, so it's just a, a cool cube from from doctor who next one printed in two parts so this one here is the base of the lighthouse we then printed in a clear pet g and did the lid and that gets you a little lighthouse there. 
say printed in, in three parts, printing this pet part normally and then this part and then the uh, and then the pet G as well. We got all those to stick with 3D lac, so even though we don't have a heated build plate, still managed to uh, to print with this anyway, so that was really quite impressive. Um, it came out really clean, you know, they, they, they're good solid prints. Um, the build volume isn't the biggest, but Again, it comes down to a machine for an application rather than one machine that does everything. So, final thoughts. For 570 quid, um, or if you were a school, I suppose 476, um, it's a great machine to start your maker space with. It doesn't have the world's biggest build volume, but it does have the features that mean that it's safer to use without, without sounding harsh, it's kind of idiot proof. So flash print has a very basic um, tool set within it that you can expand if you want to get more technical, but, um, but you, can, um, you can roll this up and most kids would be able to get to grips with the software really, really quickly and they'd get immediate, relatively immediate gratification for succeeding. You know, um, you're, you're not going to get failures with this machine. It is going to just time and time again repeat ability. There are a lot of machines out there that can print really well and then gradually the prints degrade unless you do regular maintenance. The Flash Forge machines, they are nice and reliable and they are repeatable results. Which when you're in a setting where you've got a lot of different people using the machines and you've got a lot of different models being used and things like that. What you need is repeatability and reliability. And that's what you're getting with these kind of machines. So thanks very much for joining us guys, and I'll see you soon.